Today I'm talking about sapili, sapeli, tomato, tomato. It doesn't really matter how you pronounce it. It is a fantastic alternative for mahogany wherever you would use mahogany. So today we're going to talk about its workability, mechanical properties, and its overall appearance. Over the last year, I've been using a lot of Sapili in the shop, especially for the eight-day hands-on guitar building workshops that I host here in Burnville, Pennsylvania. And just for anyone considering Sapili as a substitute for mahogany, I just want to go over some of the differences between the two species and what my experience has been and the experience of my students in using Sapili over the last year. So let's talk about the bendability of this wood. I just finished um, bending a set here in the side bending machine and I'm going to pull this set out and we'll talk about uh, some of the properties that make it especially well suited to bending. I've been using takes a bend very easily. I do soak the wood for about 15 minutes prior to bending, but if it was a heavily quilted or figured piece, I might consider just lightly spritzing it and then putting it in the bender. Uh, the really nice thing about this wood though is that I can leave it a little thicker and it will still take the bend. I can thickness these down to 90 thousandths of an inch instead of 75 thousandths of an inch and it's just really nice to have that extra 15 thousandths of an inch when you're sanding the sides square and smooth in preparation for binding. Now let's say you want to carve a sapili neck. Um, what you can expect from that is sapili should carve just like mahogany. It really does. In my experience, it has been very comparable to mahogany. In fact, with your suppliers I've, that I've seen um, a lot of them are now selling sapili as brace wood. So if that's any indication of how well this wood carves. Now, as we'll talk about in a little bit, the, the appearance of sapili. Um, so a lot of sapili has this very quilted, figured thing going on. And the further you go down that road with the figure, it's just going to be more difficult to carve in those cases. But that's nothing new, even with heavily figured mahogany or any wood for that matter, the more figure you have, the more difficult it's going to be to carve with that wandering grain. But as long as you've selected for a very plain and straight grained piece, you should have no problem carving this. Let's talk about the appearance of the wood. I'm gonna show you several different book match sets here so you can get an idea for the variability that you can expect from this species. So it looks sort of similar to mahogany. These examples, by the way, are rough thickness with 60 grit, so a lot of the grain and figure is obscured by that right now. Some of the wood has this ribbon figure, which is really attractive. Some of the wood has this quilted figure, which is also very attractive. The grain is porous, just like mahogany, and should be filled with pore filler before finishing if you don't want the finish to sink into the pores. But let's scrape a fresh surface on one of these, just so we can get rid of that 60 grit and see what this wood really looks like. So I've got two examples here one with the ribbon figure and one with the quilt.
Okay, enough about aesthetics. Let's talk about the mechanical properties of this wood and see how it stacks up against mahogany. I'm going to hop on the computer for this one. I always use the wood database at wooddatabase.com. It's really the best resource out there for evaluating the mechanical properties of wood, especially before you buy them, before you can actually see them and, and test out the wood for yourself. So I'm evaluating Sapili right now as a neck wood. And the first thing I look at here is the average dried weight, which is, of course, just the weight of the wood. That's how heavy it's going to feel in the player's hands. And so, of course, that's an, an important thing to look at. And here you can see Sapili is 42 pounds. If I hop on over to Mahogany here on the other tab, I can see that Mahogany is 37 pounds. So it weighs less. Um, or I should say the Sapili weighs more. So it's a heavier wood, still far from being considered a very heavy wood, but it is a noticeable difference. And when I hold mahogany in one hand and Sapili in the other, I can feel that weight difference. So you will notice that it is an important factor. If weight is the most important thing to you, sticking with mahogany is a very good idea. Now, the next thing I might look at, going back to Sapelli now, is the Janka hardness, which essentially think of it as if you were to take your thumb and stick it into the wood, is it going to leave an impression or is the wood very hard and dense where it's going to resist the pressure that you're putting on it? So is that wood going to ding easily? And you can see here, Sapelli is... Uh, 1,410 foot-pounds, I think that's uh, what that is. And if I go over to Honduran Mahogany, that is 900. So there's a noticeable difference there, and this time it's in favor of Sapili. Sapili is a harder wood that will resist dings and things like that a lot better than Mahogany will. And again, this is something when I have the two pieces in my hand, I can notice this. I can take my thumb and very easily leave an impression in mahogany, not so with Sapili. So that's kind of nice. So the next thing I would look at here is the elastic modulus, which sometimes is called the modulus of elasticity. Really, it just describes how much the neck resists the pull of the strings, to put it very simply. So essentially, it's a good indicator of your overall stiffness of the neck. And there's really just a wide range of what can be considered acceptable for the stiffness of the neck and this is within it as you can see if i hop over here so that's at 1,746,000 if i go over here this is at 1,458,000 there's really not a large difference between those two so i'm okay with that going back to sapili the next thing i would look at is over here where it says shrinkage this whole section right here this really describes the stability of the wood. So when people talk about wood being stable and uh, being able to resist environmental pressures that would cause it to warp, that's what they're talking about here. And these first two things, radial and tangential, you can just ignore those. What I like to look at, skip right over them, and go straight to volumetric, which is really a combination of those two things, and the TR ratio, which is your tangential and radial as a ratio. And those matter more than looking at radial and tangential individually. So I hope I'm not really confusing you at this time. Just take it as a given that you wanna look at volumetric and TR ratio. So for Sapili, we have 12.8% for our volumetric shrinkage, which is actually kind of high, but our T ratio is actually the same as mahogany, which a 1.5 TR ratio is pretty hard to get and that's really a good indication of very stable wood. However, stability is really a combination of this TR ratio and the volumetric. So Sapili kind of loses against mahogany on the volumetric shrinkage. It had 12.8% and Honduran mahogany has 7.5. So Honduran mahogany is a little more stable than Sapili. This is not something that I've noticed too much. I had, did have a couple boards that came in that after they acclimated to the shop a little bit, they cupped just slightly. 
and it was only slightly enough that I was still able to clean out the cup before using the board, so it wasn't even a problem. I would say all things considered between the volumetric shrinkage and the TR ratio, Sapili is still a great candidate for neck wood, and a lot of people use it for neck woods too, so that's another indication that it seems to be working. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.